This is Carl Moore talking management for the Globe and Mail. Today I'm delighted to speak to Joe Bauer, who's a very senior professor at the Harvard Business School. Good afternoon, Joe. Good afternoon, Carl. Joe, one of the big topics we look at this day is CEO secession and how do we choose the next CEO. What's your thoughts on the matter? It's a problem that's about as badly handed as anything really important in big companies. Uh, there is a great tendency to treat uh, CEO succession as an event. It's something that happens and you begin to worry about it about a year before it's necessary. But that leads to all kinds of problems. There is a survey that was done of something like 1,200 uh, senior HR officers of big companies. Uh, the response was 60% uh, of the responders said their companies did not have programs. In fact, uh, to do it right, you need to begin five, seven years before the fact, and it needs to be based on a real program of talent development that ought to be part and parcel of the way the company is run. So my mantra is that the way you manage your succession is actually a direct reflection and part and parcel of how you manage the company. Uh, you are either managing the company to develop talent, and you, which means that at each juncture when you have opportunities, you think of them both in terms of the development of the business, but also in terms of the development of the managers. Is it a board responsibility then to choose a CEO? The board is responsible in the end for the succession process, but the board cannot do it. The, it is very much a, a, a job, a, a key job of the chief executive and the top team that the chief executive would work with. More and more in the best companies today, you see that there is a chief HR type person, I, in, in some of the chief talent officer. Yeah. And in some ways, that person is more important than their chief financial officer because in a way, there's a lot of money around and there's not a lot of top talent. And uh, th that, there's often a triumvirate of the chief talent person, the chief financial person, the CEO. In any rate, that group, some intimate group has, is working and really starts focusing on the, the, the problem five to seven years before. They begin interacting with the board. And the board, again, it's usually in the governance and nominating committee, but it could be in the compensation committee. And usually there, if, if there's a lead director or an outside chairman, that's a central question. And, and it's a very delicate, process because in the end you're talking about the end of a career for a chief executive if it's a happy situation. But it's something where it's no longer the CEO's job, it's the board and, and the talent pool. So it's something where he or she is not in charge of it. So it makes it something, it's not about them moving on because it's just not their well, job. Well the board is responsible but they don't know enough. The board, it, only the top of the company really understands the quality of the people Lots and, and what do they need? What, what kind of experience do they need to be able to get to that point where they can step up? The board can listen, the board can provide advice, the board can meet people, the board can visit them in their divisions or subsidiaries and form impressions, but in the end of the day, it has to be managed by the CEO.